Hi, boys and girls, and welcome to Yoga Journeys with Miss Karen and Mr. Matt. We are going to start with a sun salutation, but it's going to be a little different than the usual sun salutation that we do. Mr. Matt has written a special song for us to help us start our yoga journeys. So listen to the words as he sings them and watch what I do as we go on our journey. All right, friends, are you ready to go on our yoga journey? Let's do it. Let's get ready to journey. Let's get ready to go. We'll prepare for our adventures when we move like so. To reach a high, to put on your shirt. Now reach down low and put your pants on right leg first. Down to the ground to look for your shoes and put them both on which one first will you choose twist around to put on your coat now twist the other way uh, so we won't get cold and let's get ready to journey let's get ready to go when we move like so. Let's get going. Okay, we are all ready for our journey and look where we are. Look at all the tall grass all around us. We must be in the savannah. And look over there, there's a giraffe. Do you know how to do a giraffe pose in yoga? Well, giraffes have four legs that are on the ground and a tall, tall neck. So this is how we're going to do giraffe pose. Just like this, stretch your hand up as high as you can. And now stand up straight and let's do it the other way. Giraffe pose, stretch up high. Do you think that looks just like the giraffe that we saw? Maybe a little bit. Giraffes have tall necks because they reach up high to grab the tallest leaves off the trees. So let's see how high you can reach up. Let's get up on our tiptoes and stretch our hands up as high as we can. Keep your back straight and don't forget to breathe. In and out. Good job. I like the way you did that. Now giraffes, because they have such long legs and such long necks, they have a little bit of a hard time drinking water. They have to spread their legs way out to drink water and then reach their necks way down low. Let's see if you can spread your legs far enough to get your head all the way down to the ground. Good job. That's giraffes drinking water. One last thing I want to tell you about giraffes. They have very long tongues. Let's see how far we can stick our tongues out. See if you could take your tongue and reach the tip of your But maybe with some practice, stretch that tongue out as long as you can. What about curling it? Can you curl your tongue? How far out can you stick it and still keep it curled? Fun things to do with our giraffe. Let's wave goodbye to the giraffe and let's see what other animals we can find in the savannah. Mr. Matt made a really good giraffe, didn't he? Let's keep walking in the savannah and see what we can find. As you walk, put your heel down first and then roll to the front of your foot. Feel the grass underneath your feet as you walk through the savannah. Heel first and then toe with a nice straight back and don't forget to breathe as you walk. 
And wait, what do I see? It's a zebra. Now, a zebra pose is very much like a cow pose because a zebra has four legs and is shaped pretty much like a cow. So we can do cow pose with a nice straight back for a zebra. And a zebra has ears that twitch so that they can hear sounds from all over. So you could take your hands and you could twitch your ears. See if you can hear more if you bring your ears forward or if you twitch your ear to the side or to the side or up a little bit. See if you can close your hear ears and hardly hear anything. It's fun to play with sound. Zebras do a lot of listening to see what's around them. You can also listen to see what's around you. And the last thing we're going to talk about with the zebra is how the zebra kicks its feet. So we're going to do donkey kicks in yoga, but they're just as good for zebras. So put your hands down on the ground and kick up your legs as high as you can. Zebra kicks, we're going to call them this time. Good job. I like the way you did that. Oh, I want to talk about one last thing with zebras. The way zebras walk. One leg from the left side goes forward with one leg from the right side. So what I'd like you to try to do is put your left hand and your right foot forward and then take another step and switch and take another step and switch and switch and switch and switch as you walk. Okay, we have one last animal that we're going to find in the savannah. So let's start looking. I see one more animal. Look over there. Do you see the Mr. Matt elephant? Oh my goodness. An elephant has a big, heavy, long trunk. We could put our arms like this and lean down and swing your trunk just like an elephant would. So how does an elephant search for food? An elephant is going to use its trunk to smell the food and to pick it up. So we're going to play a game with some pom-poms. And there they are. So I'm going to take my left hand and put it on my nose and take my right hand and put it through the circle I've made and pick up some pom-poms. And now I'm going to put my right hand on my nose and take my left hand through and pick up some pom-poms. Did you think it was easier with your left hand or your right hand? I don't know. Now that big trunk is probably very good for smelling. And I have a lovely flower here that I am going to smell. Oh, what a pretty smell. Sometimes I close my eyes when I smell something. I don't know why I do that. Maybe I think that I can smell it better with my eyes closed. Do you close your eyes when you smell something? So here's another question for you. Focus on your breathing when you smell something. Do you notice that you breathe differently when you smell something that smells good and when you smell something that smells bad? Focus on that and think about that for a little while. And I hope that you've enjoyed our journey to the Savannah. Come and join us next week when we will go somewhere else. Yeah, let's see you next time.